welcome um, to the lighthouse. And uh, this is one of my favorite times of the year. This is um, as a practitioner of um, any kind of liberation arts or a liberation science. Um, this this week that we're in that is leading up to the summer solstice is a very important week, um, particularly for um, rebooting our, ner our nervous system, for cleaning out our sensory system, um, for cleaning out every system, and perhaps most importantly, uh, this week is very, very significant in terms of re-greening our human heart, re-greening the human heart. So everything that we do this week is about cleansing, it's about purifying, um, it's about creating more space um, so that we can maximize the magnificence of this portal that is getting ready to open as we increase um, our experience of light as we um, enter the creative out-breath of summer. So again, this week, days leading up to Saturday are very important days to be tuning in and turning with what seems to be most significant for you. Um, some themes that might be useful um, and that certainly have been useful for me through the years as a, a practitioner. The, the very simple theme of, you know, in, in what way am I in my own way? And in what way am I already the way? And in what way am I fostering the way? So really just using the way itself as a muse to help us um, identify exit doors as a way of closing loops and again as a way of getting perfectly poised to maximize the magnificence of this season that we're about ready to enter. So in some of the old teachings it says that, um, that a, a true awakened practitioner who has concentrated and consolidated the life energy of their heart has access then to the radiance of 108 suns. And I know that that sounds like, you know, potentially a very lofty number and quantity of light energy to be able to, uh, to be granted permission into. But it's also poetical and therefore very inspiring for us. Um, as, as practitioners. So, you know, before we actually get into the practice, I want to articulate that, you know, everything that we're going to do today has to do with tuning up your ojas. So this is one of those Ayurvedic words that I um, bring into the round on a pretty regular basis. So everything that we're doing today, and for the rest of the week, for that matter, in integrative practices, is going to have to do with tuning up our ojas. So your ojas is, is this very refined, subtle life energy that's in your system and it's very much living in your spinal column. So when we do these particular kinds of practices, it's like giving an oil change to the serum of your spine. So you want to, on this theme of, of cleaning out and cleansing and letting go um, and closing loops, you want to be really um, pay fine attention to what it is that you're consuming as I hold my little green juice. Um, this is a really good time this particular week for consuming things like watermelon and cucumber and celery and daikon radish and um, dates and avocado and lettuces of all kinds. Um, really living foods that are going to help you get poised for maximizing. Um, so Take this moment to ask yourself, you know, what portals are particularly opening up for me on my path as I get ready to facilitate the re-greening of my own human heart? And I'm gonna just take a sip of this because I'm feeling a tickle in my throat. Poising into the re-greening of, of the heart consolidating and concentrating the chi in your human heart. Concentrating and consolidating it. So it's like a jewel that's inside of you and with you and illuminating you and guiding you um, at the center of you at all times. So when we work with Ojas, which we are today, it's about 
generating and creating the kind of energy that you want to experience. Um, I am certainly no stranger to the human experience of um, energy that feels dull, you know. Um, and as practitioners, we're always trying to reroute the flow of energy and to manage the inflow and outflow so that we can, more often than not, experience the kind of energy that we know to be optimal and that, um, that is most useful and therefore joyful. So this, me this first meditation, I'm going to um, show you the mudra before I outstretch my arms because I can already tell that my arms are going to exceed the limits of some of these screens that we have, uh, that I have out in front of me today. So we're creating Gyan Mudra. Last week we worked with four of the different um, mudras that help us with um, the, the sort of elevating attitudes that we want to have as practitioners. So Gyan Mudra is the conjoinment of the thumb with the index finger, and this particular mudra helps us to align with our innate wisdom, the wisdom that is um, that is native to us and that is also growing as we let go, as we let go so as to let grow. That's the old key to the, um, teaching there. So we're in Gyan Mudra and we're going to outstretch the arms in a way that's opening the heart and in a way that here in a moment you'll see as I demonstrate that we'll also simultaneously be opening up the throat. These are two very important places that we'll want to have open here. In the meditation we're going to hang our head back and then we'll do breath of fire. Okay, so we'll do this for a few moments. Um, this is going to be strengthening you, strengthening all of us as a community of practice. One of the medicines that is being most called for in this time in our emerging new world is to have enough strength so that we can give more and give in new ways. Um, to give in ways that are aligned with our individual dharma and with the collective dharma and so that we can always be coming from a place of re-skilling ourselves emotionally and socially. Okay, so gathering as much strength as you possibly can in the re-greening human heart at the center of your bodily wheel and in the throat. So I'm going to demonstrate and then I'd like for you to join in with me as soon as you can, so. Keep this going, looking at the tip of the nose. Keep this going, recognize that in pursuit of gathering and elevating and accelerating and refining our strength, it's never about creating more rigidity. So aim to be in an, to have an experience of softness in your physical body as you explore the meditation. It will give to you more. More of its magic will be revealed. More will be revealed. And therefore, more can be healed. Fidelity, high fidelity 
into the nervous system as it cleans out the field around the body. So as we practice these types of meditations, it's important to remember that how you do one thing is how you do everything. And so bring the totality of your capacity to the meditation so as to receive from it in a way that is undeniably growing you, undeniably. So create the mudra, please. This is gonna help to restore your glandular system and the nervous system, okay? And if we're tending towards our old jazz, we wanna really, really be taking care of the glandular system. It's this oscillation of the head back and forth is gonna do quite a lot in a very subtle but profound way. So create the mudra, and as I take one arm up overhead, in this case it's my left arm up overhead, I'll look to the right. As the right arm is overhead, I'll look to the left. All the while though, I'm aiming to look at the space between my eyebrows. And I'd like for you to breathe slowly in through the nose, and then immediately back out through the nose so that we're not minding a gap. Inhale swiftly and immediately meeting exhale, and then meeting the next inhale. cultivates greater and greater loving kindness and benevolence and compassion and proactivity within your organism as that world eye begins to simultaneously open inside of you you can contribute you can create impact with the grace that is awakening a couple more Tune in to, keep it going, tune in to the nature of your breath and feel into how you can refine it. Concentrating and consolidating your chi, your life energy in your heart center so as to have access to the radiance of 108 suns. Jupiter fingers and you're going to be tapping the moon 
uh, mound of the outer hand. So tapping and tapping, tapping and tapping. Every time you tap, you're going to say hara, 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 okay? And we're gonna be using the same mantra for the whole duration of the meditation. And the hara is the primordial energy, the all-inclusive primordial energy of creativity that is both seen and unseen, that is just awaiting to um, have us, all, like all energy, it's waiting for us to notice it and then allow, permit its entry so it can participate with us. Okay, so watch for a second, I'm gonna demonstrate and then we'll do it together. Hara, 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 hara. So every time I sound the hara, I'm pulling my abdominal wall back, in, and then up. Okay, so I'm creating this um, continuity in the vessel of the belly that's massaging all of the organs and creating greater vitality and that's allowing us to um, shift our magnetism so that we can become uh, vessels for greater um, prosperity consciousness, to have greater auspiciousness in our outlook, in our attitudes, um, and in, in our um, every way of being. Be teachable as you're doing the meditation. Not by me, but by the meditation, by the experience of the meditation itself. Let the meditation teach you. Let's do it. So, hara, 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 hara. Keep it going. Hara, 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 hara. Hara, hara. Looking at the tip of the nose. Hara, 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 hara. Keep this going. This particular aspect of the meditation is eliminating self-doubt and increasing confidence. Eliminating doubt, doubt kills all al alchemy, so we want to eliminate as much of that stuff as we can. To access the, di the domain of doubtless living, eliminating self-doubt and increasing confidence. A couple more. Hara, 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 hara. And then close. Watch. This is the next aspect of the meditation. Hara. Hara. So every time the hands cross in front of uh, the body, you'll sound the mantra uh, and uplift the belly. Have a peek. This is what it'll look like. Hara. 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 Okay, so join in. Hara. Looking at the tip of the nose. Hara. 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 Hara, 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 Keep it going, eliminating self-doubt so that you can anchor the frequencies of what it is that you are aiming to manifest. You can anchor those frequencies in the quantum field. And the only thing that prevents us from doing so most of the time are the old outmoded ego patterns that keep us in some kind of antiquated loop. Okay, so use the intensity and the clearing immensity, the efficacy of this gesture. Use it to empower you to move the ojas in the serum of your spinal column. Hara, 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 hara. Three, two, and one. Good. Bring the hands down. Have a peek. You're going to make a fist, wrap the thumbs around those four fingers, and then squeeze with some undeniable ferocity. 
bring the hands behind the head. And every time you sound the hara, you're gonna break the glass ceiling. Okay? Have a peek. Hara, 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 hara. So join me if you haven't already. Hara, 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 hara. You were made for this transformation. Let the movement poke and provoke you. Let it teach you. Hara, hara, hara. Don't forget to lift the abdomen up as it goes back. Hara, 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 let it build a kind of evolutional strength that allows you to give more from an awakened place. Three, two, and then one. Bring the arms down. So when we meditate, we are, and when we meet in this way, whether we're in person or whether it's virtual, it is satsang, we are in the presence of truth. Really, every instant of experience is satsang. And, you know, what it is that differentiates uh, a moment of satsang from a moment that doesn't feel like satsang is the way in which we're having our mind engaged, the way in which we're actively engaging our mind. That's the point of differentiation. And so, as practitioners of these meditative technologies, we start gathering more and more of these kinds of satsang moments so that more and more so, the totality of our existence is defined by satsang or silence. Silence or satsang, so good. Okay, so moving right along, hopefully that little bit of talking um, gave your shoulders, your arms, your neck. Um, and your mind, a little bit of rest. So this next iteration is a little bit softer. You're gonna say the same mantra, this time on a whisper. The left hand is gonna be closest to the field of the body, um, but out about two to three inches from the heart center. And then the right hand will be out about two to three inches from the left hand. And you're going to move the arms up and down, and you're gonna whisper. Looking at the tip of the nose, keep this going. If you haven't started, go ahead and begin. Redreaming, remembering, regreening, regreening your human heart in this pre solstice recalibration week. Sitting up nice and straight so the spinal serum and all of the ojas in your body can flow in an unobstructed manner with as little distortion as possible. creative 
vibration and frequency that's bathing the whole of your being. Hada, hada. bring you greater certainty. Certainty is essential for navigating with expertise in this time of uncertainty. This particular sequence of meditations that we've done today is all about establishing certainty at the, at the cell deep level. Certainty is essential if we're going to navigate with expertise in times of uncertainty. A couple more hottest, a couple more, and bring it all down to the abode of the belly, your belly, and feel into how the ball of the belly, soft as it is now in this surrendered moment, is a small universe inside of your physical being. So I'm going to give you one more meditation. Hopefully you can stay uh, on the call in the next couple of moments. So as I was saying at the beginning, we're moving. This is a very important portal week as we move into Saturday's summer solstice. And as any practitioner of libera uh, liberation arts or liberation science, um, we want to we want to maximize these openings in the flow of life force so that we can um, so that we can really show up and shine in full stature in um, in the ways in which we are growingly capable of doing so. So because this is high summer that we're getting ready to um, kick off, it's a time of heat, right? Um, so as in an effort to create a harmonization in that heat, we're going to do. Um, a breathing practice of pranayama that um, it has to do with the lunar energies in the body. So we're bringing a coolitude to um, all of the fire that is this season that we're getting ready to enter. 
it's really important to always know how to harness those harmonizations in, um, in your body um, for all kinds of reasons. So regarding this particular meditation, the business of harnessing and harmonizing the energies in terms of lunar and solar and cooling and heating helps us to um, relax any kind of compulsion that we might have that's holding us back in any way or, in, or even in multiple ways. It's important to remember that liberation cannot occur in the company of compulsion. Liberation cannot occur in the company of compulsion. And liberation is always a matter of subtraction. It's never a matter of multiplication. Liberation is a matter of subtraction. So that's why we've been focusing in today's meditations, focusing upon um, letting go and upon um, clearing out, identifying the exit doors that we try to slip away through. Um, you know, I speak like I'm not subject to the stuff, but I'm in there with you. Of identifying those exit doors and then closing the loops, sealing the leaks in the boat, magnetizing in a way that is very, very um, useful. Um, so, and you know, generating the certainty that is uh, a necessity for navigating with expertise in times of uncertainty, which is this time, right here, right now. So, this is Chandra Vedana, beautiful, very ancient practice, very, very simple practice that involves breathing every time through your left nostril, and breathing in through the left nostril, and breathing out every time through the right nostril. Okay, so again, this is going to help to relax and remove any kind of compulsory energy and to restore that into um, a, a deep, deep, deep equilibrium. Okay, so I'm resting my left hand on top of my left knee. I'm sealing my right nostril with my thumb just below the um, cartilage, the sturdy cartilage part of the bridge. And I'm going to inhale and then hold for a second and then exhale and hold for a second. So join in, please. Curl your index and middle finger of your right hand in towards the center of your palm. Bring the thumb to the right nostril and the ring finger to the left. Seal the right nostril, look at the tip of the nose, inhale long through the left. Breathing in a long, lunar, silver, silken line of breath. Holding and then exhaling out of the right nostril. Exhaling everything that is no longer giving life to your life. Exhaling anything that might be preventing you from supporting life, that might be holding you back from experiencing the full regreening of your heart. Inhale left. Pause for a minute. And let this lunar light lace through every cell in your system. Inhale left, please. Every in-breath is locking in these certainty codes so that you can manifest your vision and your mission with greater and greater ease. Exhale right. So that you can manifest and mobilize with less self-doubt and an increased confidence. Inhale left. 